Hi there kids, it's me Miss Booksy. Let's watch all of my favorite cool school adventures. Tell me in the comments what adventure you want to see next. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendis and his mighty penultimate. In today's episode, Drew's got to fight something big to save something little. It was story time at Cool School, and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait to read one of their favorite stories ever. Oh, hey kids! Today we have a very exciting story to read, Little Red Riding Hood. Let's get started. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because she always wore a... Wait a second! Something doesn't look right here. Hmm. Well, that's Little Red Riding Hood, all right. But why isn't she wearing red? Hmm, I guess we could just call her Little Riding Hood. No, no, no! That's not how the story goes. I've got to figure out what's going on here. With story time on the line, Drew got right into costume. Then he sketched the portal and jumped right into Miss Books' storybook. Sure is spooky out here. Oh no, my cape! Help! Hold on! Drupendous to the rescue! Oh, I wasn't expecting to see a young boy. It's mostly grandmas and scary wolves around here. I heard you scream. Did you need help with something? Yes! This scary villain lady just came out of nowhere and stole my red cape. She said something about loving colors. And she had this really cool color vacuum thing. Hmm, loves colors and has a color vacuum. I know who your problem is. Ray's Kale! And she's not going to get away with this. Oh, thank goodness! I need that cape. Kind of hard to be Little Red Riding Hood without the Red Riding Hood part. Well, if I were a girl and a red cape and a forest, where would I go? Oh, how about Grandma's Cottage? That's where I like to go anyway. Good call. Here. <laughs> Hop on. Whoa, cool. And off Drew Road with Little Red deep into the dark, scary forest until they reached Grandma's cottage. Then they peeked through the windows. There! That's her! And that's my cape! And that's my Grandma! I think. Come over here, dearie. Come to Grandma. Uh, you like have a really deep voice for an old lady? The better to greet you with. And like really big eyes. The better to see you with. Uh-oh. I know where this is going. And it's not good. Stop right there, both of you. Drew? Ugh. What do you want, kid? I was just about to eat my dinner. We want my cape back. Another one? Where do you kids keep coming from? You can't just steal people's capes, Grace. Oh, yeah? And who's going to stop me? I am the stupendous stupendous on behalf of my fellow caped crusaders. Ha. Huh. Well, I'm, like, not impressed. So scrap. I hereby demand that you return Little Red's cape immediately. Uh, yeah, what he said. Or else. Ah, well, when you put it that way, got a jet. Till next time, Drufus. BTW, you guys have some, like, great colors in your outfit. We gotta talk. We sure got her dad this time. That was awesome! Man, this thing is tight. Thanks for sketching me this awesome hoverboard, Drew. She totally fell for it. Wait a minute. I have to eat someone. Grandma doesn't want to be hungry. Hmm, I think I got a better idea. I'm on it. So Drew ran outside and sketched a full moon in the sky. I told ya wolves like to do that. Animal Kingdom 101. Looks like he'll be busy for a while. You guys are the best! Couldn't have gotten my cape back without you. Nothing can stop us. <laughs> ah! so, maybe that guy. We better head out while he's still distracted. Yeah, and Miss Booksy will be waiting to finish story time. Thanks, you guys. Anytime, Red. Now you better go find Grandma. Something tells me she'll be needing your help. Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because she always wore red. <laughs> and there it is, her red cape. You did it, Drew. You saved the story. That's what superheroes do. 
Well, kids, Drew and his buddies saved the day once again. Little Red got her cape back, and story time was right back on track. Moral of the story, boys and girls, always be wary of big bad wolves dressed as your grandma. And don't forget your cape next time you gotta fight off the bad guys. Hey there, kids, it's time for our brand spanking new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pet ultimate. In today's episode, Drew saves Cool School from himself. Wait, that can't be right. It was a totally normal day at Cool School. Nikki was just about to give her report on Valentine's Day, but... Hey, someone erased my wiki. I saw Drew do it. <gasps> Say what? Kids, Drew would never do anything like that. I didn't do it. Yeah, huh? I saw you. Except you were wearing a funny looking costume. This sounds fishy, kids. <laughs> Time for a recess. This would give Drew a chance to find the imposter who erased Nikki's wiki. But when he got to the playground, Drew found the swing sets, the slides, and the jungle gym were all gone! It's like they had been erased! Drew went back inside. There was Crafty Carol, and she did not look happy. Oh, there you are! Who, me? Drew, did you erase all of my crafting supplies? No way! I promise! Oh, thank goodness. I didn't think so, but someone said they saw you do it. <laughs> Hey, stop it right there, you faker! All of a sudden, kids came pouring out of the cafeteria. Yuck! Ew! Gross! The mysterious villain had erased the lunch menu and all the labels on the food. The lunch lady accidentally served up sloppy joes with grape jelly, onion slices, and cauliflower tacos with liver! Gross! But it's supposed to be pizza day! There he is! That's who done it! No way! I would never mess with pizza day! Then it dawned on Drew. Someone who looked like him was running around erasing everything. The opposite of drawing. It was like he had... An evil twin. My name is Ray. As an eraser. <laughs> You're the one who's been erasing stuff. Yeah, and now I'm going to erase you. I don't think so, pal. Hey! What about this? Let's get ready to run. Give it up, Drew. There's nothing you can draw that I can't erase. Oh no, kids. Has Drew Pendus met his match? A bad guy he can't beat. No way. He can't beat me if he can't catch me. Drew used his super speed shoes to run down the hall and into the library. Miss Booksy, help. I need a book on how to send my evil twin back to his evil planet. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's one. <laughs> How to send your evil twin back to his evil planet. Perfect. Boogers! He erased all the pages. Aha! I'm drawing your book. Oh, what do you want from me? I want chaos, craziness, destruction! <laughs> well, that's a silly answer. Yeah, what do you really want? I, I just want to be a student in cool school. Well, that makes sense. It is the best school in the universe. That's true. Where I came from, we only had cruel school. And it's not cool at all. Ray told them about cruel school, where everything was the opposite. Instead of good teachers, they had bad ones, like Krabby Carol. Stay away from my glitter. And Captain Hooksy, the cruel school librarian. She used to be a pirate, and now all the books are up to shreds. Arg. All I want is to stay here with you guys. I'll be good, I promise. They actually considered it. After all, cruel school did sound terrible. But Drew saw that Ray had his fingers crossed behind his back. That's the universal sign that someone is fibbing. Don't worry, I saw that and I have a plan. Drew made a door to cruel school. Oh no, I dropped my penultimate and I rolled out the door. It's my pen now! <laughs> Kids, Ray has the mighty pen ultimate! Now I can draw whatever I want and take over the world! Hey, wait a second! This pen doesn't work! What's the matter, Ray? I'm drawing a blank. Have a nice day at cruel school, Ray. Yay! Whoa, how'd you do it? Simple. I could tell he really wanted my penultimate, so I drew a fake one that didn't have any ink. Ray won't be coming back to cool school anytime soon. Well, we sure hope not. Anyway, the moral of the story, kids, don't go around erasing people's homework. 
and never mess with Drew's Pen Ultimate. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty Pen Ultimate. In today's episode, Drew time travels to ancient Egypt. Now kids, be sure to keep a lookout for these shiny gold coins hidden in today's episode. Tell us in the comments below how many you found. It was field trip day at Cool School, and Drew and his buddies visited the museum so they could learn all about Egypt. Drew, who is your mummy? Ah, the mummy! It's alive! <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen your face. Ah, uh, it's alive! <laughs> you wouldn't have survived a day in real Egypt. Not funny, Ella. You know you're not supposed to mess with mummies, or they come to haunt you. Some even steal your favorite sneakers. I'll share my sneakers with a mummy any day. They don't scare me. Hey guys, look! The famous Egyptian Sphinx! It's true, the nose is missing. Legend has it, it's still hidden somewhere in Egypt, and whoever finds it will be granted any wish they want. No way, like a trip to the Bahamas, or world peace, or an Xbox? Yep, anything you like. That's the rumor anyway. All right kids, come on, time for the next exhibit. Ooh, I wonder who crafted that lovely headpiece. Hmm, the legend sure does sound cool. I've always wanted to go to Egypt. Maybe if I just... Then Drew sketched the awesomest time machine ever. Drew, we're all waiting for... Hey, what's going on here? Oh, uh, I was just uh, hanging out in this time machine. Whoa, you're going back in time to ancient Egypt to track down the missing nose and get granted any wish you want and go down in history forever, aren't you? Uh, maybe. Well, not without me, you aren't. So off they went, way, way, way back in time until BAM! They finally arrived in ancient Egypt, just as the Great Sphinx was being built. Hey look, up there! Someone was standing on top of the Sphinx. Drew pulled out his pen ultimate and sketched a giant bucket of dried leaves. What? Camels like this stuff. Uh, you don't fly, do you? They flew way, way up to the tippity top of the Sphinx. Wait a minute, I thought the Sphinx didn't have a nose. Uh-oh, something didn't smell right, kids. The evil Ray Blank should have known he was behind this. <laughs> Stop right there, evil Ray. You can't just erase noses off as Sphinxes. That's super not cool. Oh yeah? Who's gonna stop me? Ray jumped down into a tunnel. Drew and Ella were hot on his heels. Boo! Ah! Huh. Give up yet? Quick, we can't let him get away. First darkness, now frogs. What's next? Of course, locusts. This Egypt place is crazy. Come on, this way. They finally reached the end of the long, dark tunnel when Drew spotted a giant mummy case. Um, I think it's alive. And I think I have an idea. Uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let me out of here. You're not done with me yet. You'll pay for this. Let me out. Phew, that was a close one. Um, where are my sneakers? Uh, I told you not to mess with mummies. Uh, Drew? Run! We better get out of here. Drew sketched a giant elevator that he used to lift them way up to the top of the tunnel and back onto the top of the Sphinx. Nice work, Drew. Where have you two been? You missed all the cool stuff we learned about Egypt. You know, I never noticed that the Sphinx had such a pronounced nose. Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. Ray Blank was captured in a mummy case, and the Sphinx finally got a nose. Kinda. We may have to fix that. Moral of the story, boys and girls, try time traveling the next time you're looking for a missing nose. And be sure not to mess with mummies. They're notorious sneaker takers. Hi, we're the Levine family. And today we will be reading Hansel and Gretel for you here on Story Circle at Cool School. Here we go! Once upon a time, two kids named Hansel and Gretel lived with their very forgetful older brother Richard. He was always leaving them behind at soccer practice, ballet rehearsal, at karate lessons, and the supermarket. 
Richard was so forgetful that Gretel started carrying around a pocket full of breadcrumbs so she could leave a trail to find their way back home whenever Richard forgot about them. One day, they went for a walk in the woods to do a little bird watching, Gretel carefully dropping breadcrumbs along the way. Hansel and Gretel spotted a very lovely red robin, and as they were watching him, Richard remembered that he had left the oven on. He forgot to tell Hansel and Gretel that he needed to run back home to turn off the oven before he burned his frozen pizza. Nothing's worse than burnt pizza, not even leaving little kids alone in the forest. Actually, leaving children in the woods is way worse. But it was okay since Gretel left a trail of breadcrumbs and... Uh-oh. That little red robin ate all the crumbs! How will Hansel and Gretel ever get back now? Hansel and Gretel began to roam the woods looking for their way home. Their little bellies were really starting to growl with hunger. A nice hot pizza sure would be good right about now. It was then that they saw a house made of gingerbread and candy. Could it be true? They ran up and started taking bites of the house. It was true, and it was delicious. Just as Gretel was about to lick the frosting off the windowsill, a mean old witch popped her head out the window. Oh, no you don't! Sorry, we're just so hungry. Well, why didn't you say so? Come in, come in. I'll feed you and fatten you up. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel were so hungry they went into her house even though they thought it might be a bad idea to hang out with the witch, especially since their mommy and daddy always told them never to go with strangers. The witch fed them more candy and cake and pie. She made chicken and waffles and mashed potatoes with little rivers of gravy and syrup. The witch even had homemade cotton candy. The food was delicious and Hansel and Gretel had nearly forgotten that they needed to get back home. Well, how are you feeling? Nice and full? Oh yes, thank you. Good, because when I turn you into puppies, you'll be nice and chubby, perfectly cuddly. Did you say turn us into puppies? Why, yes. I get pretty lonely out here in the woods and puppies are fun to play with. Even better than children, they grow up and become teenagers. Yuck. Hansel and Gretel were not okay with this at all. They loved puppies as much as the next kid, but they didn't want to be puppies. They had to find a way out. That night, as the witch slept, snoring louder than a dump truck, I might add, Hey, I go vroom vroom. I don't snore. They were just about to sneak out of the witch's gingerbread candy house when Hansel stepped on a dog toy that let out a loud squeak. The witch woke up. Oh, no you don't. My pretty puppies. Gretel grabbed a stick and waved it at the witch. Back off. You won't turn me into a dog. Look, that was no ordinary stick for playing fetch. That was the witch's magic wand she used for casting spells. When Gretel waved it at the witch and said the word dog, the witch herself started to turn into a big gray Labrador puppy. She tried to yell, No, stop! But all that came out was, <coughs> Hansel and Gretel were afraid she would be a mean dog and they backed away. But she happily jumped and licked their faces. She was a great big puppy. They had defeated the witch and they had a new dog for a pet. As you know, dogs are excellent in finding their way around. With her big nose, she could smell the trail of breadcrumbs that Gretel had left and the robin had eaten and she led them home. Richard was so happy to see Hansel and Gretel. Did I forget to bring you guys with me when I went home to see if my pizza was ready? Yes! Oops, sorry about that. Then, he saw the puppy they brought with them and he said that of course they could keep the dog as long as they didn't get him in trouble with their mom and dad. They named her Gingerbread in honor of the house where they found her. Gingerbread turned out to be super useful around the house, barking whenever Richard forgot things like leaving the oven on, or forgetting to turn off the faucet, or where he left the car in every parking lot they ever go to. And so, Richard, Gingerbread, Hansel and Gretel all lived happily ever after. The end. Hi guys, we're Gabrielle and Chad. And this is Siege. Today, we're over at Cool School for the Story Circle. That's right, and we're gonna read The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Are you ready? Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Terry. He was a bit of a terror. In fact, he was called Terry the Terror. <laughs> 
He would kick and scream anytime he wanted something. At the toy store. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. At the ice cream shop. I want more, 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 now, 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 now. Even at the grocery store. I don't want cereal. <laughs> I want cookies, I want cookies, I want cookies. And with everything he could have ever wanted at his fingertips, he was a pretty bored boy at that. Oh, um, uh, bored. Bored boys often get into trouble, and boy did Terry get into trouble. He would take cupcakes from the baker's window. He would let the chickens loose from old Mr. O'Brien's chicken farm. <laughs> and worst of all, he would run up behind old Mr. Hackle and scream, <laughs> Which didn't matter much because Mr. Hackle couldn't hear too well. Eh? Luckily for Terry, the townspeople were very patient people. The baker learned to make one extra cupcake every morning so that she wouldn't be short for the customers. Mr. O'Brien trained his chickens to come to his call so that if they got loose, they would come back. <laughs> and Mr. Hackle still made Terry help him across the street. Life went on as usual, and as usual, Terry got bored. One day when he went out into the woods tearing leaves off trees and splashing in mud, Terry came up with an idea. Hey, I have an idea. It's genius. Everyone will totally flip out and I will laugh so hard. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> The next morning, when everyone was getting ready for Terry to come tearing through town, he didn't show up. The baker said, That's weird. I have one extra cupcake today. The farmer called for his chickens, but they were already there, staring at him. Ah. Mr. Hackle just stood by the corner waiting. Hmm? Well, after an hour went by, people started to worry. And just then, Terry came running into town screaming, Wolf, 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 hey everybody, there's a wolf, there's a wolf, run for your lives, wolf, 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 help, 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 there's a wolf, help. The baker quickly slammed the shutter so fast her cupcakes splattered everywhere. Old Mr. O'Brien ushered all his chickens inside of his maximum security chicken coop and locked the doors. <laughs> Everyone in town scrambled to their houses and stores and locked them up tight, leaving Terry <laughs> laughing in the town square. <laughs> you silly people, there's no wolf. You fell for it. <laughs> oh, that was almost too easy. <laughs> hmm? Everyone in the town was upset. Old Mr. O'Brien's chickens were so upset, they didn't lay eggs for three days. <laughs> But Terry thought it was all extremely funny. After things got back to normal, Terry began to feel mischievous again. Hey, I wonder if they would fall for it a second time. <laughs> oh, we'll find out. And so the next morning, Terry called out from the woods. Wolf! 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 Help! Help, Wolf! <laughs> I mean, help! The baker and old Mr. O'Brien squinted their eyes and looked off into the woods. And just then, Terry came limping out of the woods with his shirt torn and dirt all over his face. He was really going for a Daytime Emmy Award this time. Everyone began to panic because this time it had to be real. The baker slammed her cupcakes in the window. <laughs> old man O'Brien cooped up his chickens. And everyone ran inside. Everyone except Terry, and well, except for Mr. Hackle, but that's just because he couldn't hear all the fuss. Hmm? Oh, you fools, you silly, silly people. There's no wolf, you fell for it again. <laughs> Twice, that's two. <laughs> Tune it up at me, you. <laughs> After a few days, things got back to normal. Terry wasn't allowed to go into town anymore. He was grounded for three whole weeks. <sighs> One day, Terry was playing in the yard, and guess who showed up? A real live wolf. Hello. Wolf, 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 help, wolf. A hungry wolf, that's me. Wolf, wolf, oh no, wolf, real wolf, real wolf. In town, the baker heard Terry crying. 
Is that for real? Oh, that's just Terry the Terror at it again. I'm not falling for that this time. And old Mr. O'Brien heard Terry crying. Don't worry, girls. It's just Terry the Terror at it again. And Mr. Hackle, well, you guessed it. He didn't hear anything anyway. He didn't even look up from his crossword puzzle. Hmm? The whole town ignored Terry yelling because they knew it must have been a trick. And then the wolf ate Terry in one bite. Mmm, that was a good little boy. Luckily for Terry, the same wolf also ate Little Red Riding Hood's grandma, which turned out to be too much, and he threw them both up. Wow! Oh, that is, that is just wrong. That is just wrong. Who are you? Terry ran home and told his parents, who had a hard time believing him. But one thing Terry knew for sure, he was going to be a very good boy for the rest of his life. The moral of the story is, don't trick people, especially when it comes to safety. Always tell the truth, don't hang around wolves, and don't scare chickens if you're hoping to have some eggs. Ah. The end. Hey there kids, Miss Booksy here with Storytime at Cool School. Today we're revisiting one of my all-time favorite fairy tales. Can you guess? It's Cinderella! <laughs> I've read you a Cinderella story before, but this time we're doing a whole series with chapters. So let's get started. Here we go with Cinderella chapter one. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. <laughs> That's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. When I was Ella and everything was nice and peaceful and lovely. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. So when I was little, I was never ever lonely. Two cats, Sir Bonkers and Lady Blinky, a dog named Patches, a hamster named Spinner, a tortoise named Fudge, a lizard named a lizard Biff, a pony named Pegasus, not a real Pegasus, but that would be really cool, <laughs> and a goldfish named Goldie. Okay, so Goldie wasn't such great company. Moving on. My dad was the greatest dad of all time, seriously. And he told the awesomest bedtime stories ever. And then the big bad wolf said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. And then the little pig squealed, Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. See, he was really good at doing voices. So let's see, my pets were cool, my dad was the best. Oh, and our town was super neat too. We lived in the kingdom, excuse me, a queendom of Queen Elaine the First. She put on fabulous tea parties and concerts and musicals, like all the time. <laughs> so yeah, things were pretty great, but I must have been cursed by an evil witch or something because one day my dad told me that he was getting married. <gasps> okay. That's not the terrible part. It would have been awesome if you were marrying Queen Elaine or somebody cool like that, but no way. Somehow he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey! Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. My stepsisters had a real su casa is mi casa kind of attitude. In other words, they took all my That's stuff. That's mine! I want it. Mine! Gimme! Okay, I'm all about sharing is caring, guys, but come on, you can't take all my clothes. Here, you can wear this. <laughs> then they said they were scared of all my animals, so scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. Even a lizard bit, she'll get cold. Too scary. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go. Take her away! They all have to go! I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. The great animal exodus wasn't the end of it. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping. I did the windows. <laughs> I did the vacuuming! And being big old meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Whoops! <laughs> I cleaned non-stop, day in and day out. And I was a mess, a 
always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. So yeah, this all lasted a few years. Then my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move into the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary, but I had my animals and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi guys. <laughs> Anyway, my dad wouldn't be gone forever, right? He'd come back and see how me and my step family was and give him the boot, right? Life in the barn wasn't so bad. Cinderella had made a nice little room for herself. <laughs> being that much closer to the rooster meant I never overslept. And it sure was convenient being able to just roll over and start my chores. <laughs> but I missed my old life especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. Then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra, awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. Oh, they were the worst. Fine. I'll go find him. Don't be ridiculous. You have to stay here and take care of us. No way. I'm going to go find him and fight the pirates. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll hire a search party. They'll find him and bring him home. Really? Really. But like, really, really? Really, really, really. Gosh. Can we stop talking about pirates and like get some breakfast? Yeah, really. Cinder, really. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. With my dad gone so long, things went from very bad to way worse. My stepmother decided it was time for my stepsisters to get married. And of course, I had to help. There were etiquette lessons. The most difficult task was teaching them how to be not terrible. Would you like to go for a walk? You don't have a carriage. Ew, next. Okay, so maybe don't yell so much. Why? Never mind. It was beginning to feel pretty useless. My stepsisters were just big old meanies. Meanwhile, my dad was still out there somewhere with a crusty old gang of pirates. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad compared to these guys. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> Good night, Sir Bonkers, Lady Blinky, Patches, Spinner, Fudge, Elizabeth, Pegasus, Goldie. <laughs> Good night to you, Squeakers. Pip and Puff Puff. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Rooster. Shh. Save it for the morning. That night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gretzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing. I was all dressed up. No more rags. And I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. <laughs> What's all that racket? Why didn't you wake me, Mr. Rooster? We must get to work immediately! This is so exciting! What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa! I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown. <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny! That is funny. You in a gown. Get it? Because you wear rags! Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Whatever. They're rude. I was used to it. But a royal ball? Now this is exciting! I have to make a dress. And my hair. What am I going to do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually want to talk to in forever. <laughs> I hope people still like knock-knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> a little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh. Shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. Anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes, these must have belonged to my mom. 
They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. And next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes. And my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know. So, do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh, right. Um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid. No money, no detective. Wait. What if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um... It's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a, a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I, I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no, not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. Oops, I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Well, back to square one. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. <laughs> what do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? Yeah, you're right. Too casual. Cinderella, come here. Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths, manicures, pedicures, blowouts. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much. And Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest, I was kind of sad. I retreated to the bar with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but... <sighs> I was sad, okay? And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, Oh, if I only had a fairy godmother! <laughs> Yoo-hoo! What? Hello! Oh. <coughs> Excuse me, frog on my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. Like, don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? 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 Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So, how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? 
Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so want to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really- want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand- Cinderella had just been explaining in detail of the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand- Oh yeah! Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. Okay, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean, you, you look, uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. Okay, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, uh, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. Okay, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand. Yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday, huh? Ball gown. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think, honey? I love it. Hey, what's this? Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf gonna want to juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> Uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani-pedi soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabbity boo! These are the bomb! Ooh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, they fit perfect! <laughs> okay, I better get on my way. Oh, wait. Pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Uh, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just empty it. That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am going to look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're going to look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one. Always laugh at people's jokes. Or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> All right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same. I love those. See, we're so similar. <laughs> Okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl, do your thing. Whew, I was quite the mover and shaker in my day. Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot, you over there. 
And y'all, over here. Well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo! Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> ah! Oh! You! Uh, you scared me half to death. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah! Fairy! You gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. <laughs> Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No problem. I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is gonna be the best night ever. At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. Ah, uh, brother, or should I say a sister? <laughs> These two. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> Oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. Sandyrella, yep, that's me. <laughs> Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, you know, I've just been, um, you guys, oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were fairies rules again? Oh yeah, common interests. Cheese puffs, don't you guys love cheese puffs? <laughs> oh, cheese cheesy, oh, yes. Those are amazing. Oh, I yes. love them so much, they're so good. Phew, <laughs> that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo! I am pooped, but I can't stop now. <laughs> Who knows when there'll be another royal ball. <laughs> I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandyrella, <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. So, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy, too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yard. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh my oh, gosh. gosh. I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah. Blue's my favorite color. No way. Mine too. Ooh, common interest. Bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. So loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. What's that noise? 
Huh? I said, what's that noise? Oh, it's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone. I gotta go. Wait up! I didn't get your name. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! No! Oh, no! 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 Oh, oh no! Wait up! Oh no! Well, it was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go. Wait! You left your shoe. Keep it. Huh? At least the carriage is to. Oh, great. And so, with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home, all 48 miles, which took exactly 864 minutes. She wasn't too sad, though. I mean, guys, <laughs> the prince danced with me a ton, and I made so many friends, and I did a conga line, and the limbo, and the robot, <laughs> and I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way! He's gonna ask me. 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 Well, we'll see who he putts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. The Royal Mini Golf Tournament? I almost forgot! And wait, Gritzel and Oonga got invited? Oh boy. Mini golf tournament, huh? Don't worry about it, Cinderella. You're not allowed to go. Why not? Mom, tell Cinderella she can't go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Cinderella, you most certainly cannot go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Ugh, I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. What girl? This girl Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. So annoying. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. Cinderella decided she'd better practice her golf swing before the big tournament. Oh, you better believe I'm going. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm going. Fairy godmother better come through for a sister. I'm gonna need some new duds. <laughs> what do you think, Sir Bonkers? How's my swing? <laughs> <sighs> I guess I need to keep practicing. <laughs> Finally, the big day had arrived. Time to putt. <laughs> Cinderella waited for her fairy godmother to arrive. I wonder what kind of outfit I'm gonna get today. Oof, and I hope I get a new pair of shoes. I love these glass slippers, but I can't golf in just one shoe. I probably need sneakers anyway. Where is she? There she is. Ew. Mom says you have to go with us to the mini golf tournament. Yes! Okay, um, can I borrow a dress or something? I mean, I can't go looking like this. <laughs> you shouldn't go anywhere looking like that. But no, you can't borrow a dress. Unga, please. Cinderella, ugh, no one cares what you look like. We just need you to, like, hold our bags and get us drinks and stuff. Oh. So, like, hurry up. Guys, the prince can't see me like this. All right, fairy godmother, <laughs> it'd be super great if you could show up about now. Uh, okay, fine, I'll just go to the prince's palace wearing rags. <laughs> no big deal or anything. <sighs> eh? There she is. The big day of the royal mini golf tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. And look at me, I'm wearing rags at the palace. You know where the prince lives? Ugh. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with said prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow, oh, I guess it can. So yeah, Cinderella was pretty bummed. And so was the prince. He had really been looking forward to his mystery girl showing up. Why are you carrying around a shoe? Long story. And why do you keep gazing off into the distance? No reason. Hey, Prince, watch me putt. Huh? Oh yeah, that's great. I didn't even swing the club yet, ugh. Sorry, hey, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Do you know the girl I was dancing with the other night? Nah. -uh. Do you know her? What girl? I didn't see a girl. I have to find her. I must see her again. Oops. Heads up. Hey, do I know you? Eek, the prince, what do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella, play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else, uh, right? 
Yeah. What? Okay, gotta go. That couldn't have been. Or could it? Great. Just great. I blew it. Uh, Cinderella had really, really, really wanted to talk to the prince, but she panicked. She was sure the prince would just see her in rags and reject her. I mean, princes like princesses, right? Right? So that settles it. I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella. Oh, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinder who? <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That's great. Oh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Whatever. That's cool. <laughs> Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this. He doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure. He thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. So, like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it because I'm a private eye, the key word being private. But he says she's super cool. Yeah. And really funny. Yeah. And a fabulous dancer. She sounds great. <laughs> yeah, but she said she'd be here and she didn't show. Kind of rude if you ask me. Oh, I'm sure she has a really good reason. <laughs> we'll see. The prince is a good fella. Hate to see him get his heart broken. Well, gotta get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> well, the good news is the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> the bad news is I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. She tried to come up with a plan. Maybe I... No. Well, what if I... No, that won't work. Oh, I got it. I could... Uh, no. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too. Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has this shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So, like, our feet need to look good. Yeah, we need prince-worthy tootsies. The prince is coming here? <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah. Me. No way. Me. 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 This Me. is going to be interesting. Me. Me. Cinderella was so nervous. The prince was coming to her house. Oh, man. Fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She tried rubbing a lamp. What? It worked for Aladdin. She tried wishing on a falling star. No stars. Shoot. And finally, Cinderella tried to conjure her fairy godmother with a magical spell. Flippity, floppity, blob, blurpity, blap, madgadgis, fairyeth, godmothereth, cometh now! If. She's here! Yay! Hello! Official royal business! Open up! Oh no! The prince is here! <laughs> Let me try on that shoe. Me first! No, me! One at a time, ladies! One at a time! Hi, Princey! Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Uh, looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? Cinder who? Never heard of her. There's another girl here? Please, fetch her at once. Your Highness, the other girl was not at the ball. I can promise you that. She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get it for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. The Prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Oh, I can't go out there. I know you weren't at the ball, but it'll just take a minute and it'll make the prince happy. No, like, I really can't go out there. I'm a mouse beeswax. <gasps> what Unga said is true. I'm totally yuck. <laughs> what? You're a cutie. Come on. Okay. Now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. <gasps> Nothing? Come on! Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stink it up. 
Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! O-M-G! No way! Your Highness, I assure you, she was not at the ball! Well, actually, I was. <laughs> Super long story, but I really wanted to go and you wouldn't let me. But then my fairy godmother showed up and oh yeah, apparently I have a fairy godmother. <laughs> anyway, she showed up, waved around her magic wand and I got a dress and shoes, these shoes. Well, the other one's in the barn, but anywho, then I went to the ball and I met the prince. <laughs> No big deal. Fairy godmother? There's no such thing as a fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. <gasps> Where were you? I needed you. I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince over there. <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm a mess, but they made me try on the shoe, and of course it fit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good thing. But now he knows I'm not a princess. This is terrible. Ahem, Cinderella, can you tell us what's going on, please? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, well, um... This is my fairy godmother. Fairy godmother, this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hello. And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform Raggedy Ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. You do? Ew. You don't need a fancy dress or shoes or... Um, Hold up, uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> oh, right, fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo. I'll grab the other shoe later. <laughs> now me. No, my turn. Sorry, girls, a fairy godmother can only have one fairy goddaughter. No, no fair. fair. They'll get over it. <laughs> so it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. With all the shoe trying on, hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship of Pirate Krusty Beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. <laughs> Arg! what are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate! Well, you don't have to be rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my girl! Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Long story. <laughs> no time for stories. It's time for you to walk the plank. Ah, pirates! I almost forgot. <laughs> Allow me. Zippity zamaboo ta ta and bye bye. Yay! Okay, let's pause for a second because you're probably thinking this day couldn't get any better, right? I mean, the prince found me, my fairy godmother finally showed up and gave me some new princessy clothes, and now my dad had been rescued from the pirates. Talk about a good day. <laughs> but then it got even better. Get this, when we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out, she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lives happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsister stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. Hi boys and girls, it's story time at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're gonna begin a new chapter story. Are you ready for the princess and the pea? Yeah? Well, let's go. Once upon a time, there was a prince named Henry, but everyone called him Hank. Prince Hank was going to be king one day, but first he had to get married. Why do I have to get married? And you have to marry a princess. No substitutes allowed. That was Prince Hank's mother, the queen. It was time for princess interviews. This was where princesses from near and far would come to the palace and meet the prince, hoping to become the next queen. Hey. Hi. You didn't curtsy. Next. Make sure you curtsy. Nope. Next. Oh, hello, princess. And what kingdom do you hail from? Oh, I'm not a princess. I work here, remember? <laughs> 
Prince Hank did not remember. This was Miss Maggie who had come to the palace to work for the queen. She had been there for ages, but Prince Hank was a little bit self-absorbed. That means he liked himself a lot and didn't care about or notice much else. You work here? What does that mean? Prince Hank was also not very familiar with work. He was a bit what we would call spoiled rotten. I'm a lady-in-waiting to the queen. Waiting? What are you waiting for? The bus? Lady-in-waiting means I wait on or serve the queen, kind of like an assistant. So you're not actually waiting for anything? No. And you're not here to try and marry me? Definitely not. The queen sent me to see if you needed anything. I suppose you could help me if any of these bootleg princesses try to get fresh. Very well. Next. Nope. Next. This went on for hours. To be or not to be, that is the question. I have the answer. Next. Oh, oh brother, no. As soon as a princess would enter the room, Prince Hank would send them away. Why don't you just talk to any of these princesses? You know, try to get to know them. They might be great. You're being, I hate to say it, a little bit rude, dude. Look. Baggy. Maggie. Whatever. I can't waste my time with girls who aren't queen material. The next queen has to be the real deal. Genuine, bona fide, 100% R-O-Y-U-L-L. That spells royal. No, it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, these so-called princesses are totally bleh, and I'm bored, so I'm gonna go take a nap. Wait, I, I think there's one more girl. Ugh, fine. Next. Oh, hello. You look familiar. You remind me of someone I like. Prince Hank liked this princess immediately and invited her to stay at the castle. He was smitten, but soon it was clear they actually had a lot in common. She was very picky. Ew, next. She was very into herself. And she was not very polite. <laughs> Somebody smells like cheese. Not me, I smell good. <laughs> After dinner, everyone went down to the parlor for the evening's entertainment. In an effort to impress the princess, Prince Hank sang a song. I live in a castle, I wear a crown. It's so shiny, it's so awesome. Your turn, princess. Play us a song. Yeah, true love is great and love is not. Then I met my prince. Wah, 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 wah. Wait, no, you need to go higher. Now it's like this. Okay, I'm bored now. Where's my bed? That's when the queen leaned over to Maggie and whispered, This is how we'll tell if she's a real princess. The plan was to place one tiny green pea under the mattress in the guest bedroom. You see, supposedly a real princess would be so sensitive she would feel the teeny tiny lump and not be able to sleep a wink. Maggie thought it was a little silly, but she followed the queen's orders. <laughs> okay, your bed's ready, princess. Finally, I'm exhausted. Well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ew, gross. Oh, sorry, it's just an expression. <laughs> Good night. The next morning, Maggie and the queen eagerly waited for the princess to join them for breakfast. Did their test work? Had she felt the pee? Finally, the princess came down. Good morning, princess. But before they could ask how she slept, the princess said, Oh my gosh, there was a giant lump in the middle of my mattress. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh really? Well, we'll have that taken care of at once. Maggie! On it, ma'am. So Maggie lugged a new mattress all the way up the stairs and plopped it on the bed. <sighs> Surely she won't feel the pee under two mattresses. But the next morning played out the same. Ugh, I couldn't sleep a wink. I could still feel this gigantic pokey lump. So Maggie pulled another mattress up the stairs and put it on the bed. Ugh, okay. Maybe she could feel the pee with two mattresses, but good luck feeling it with three. <laughs> but you guessed it, the princess once again came down to breakfast, rubbing her eyes and yawning. And once again, Maggie was struggling to get yet another mattress up to the guest room and on top of a now very high bed. 
And this happened again, and again, and again, and again. Finally, Maggie asked the queen, Your Highness, isn't it obvious that the princess is a real princess? She felt the pee every single night, no matter how many mattresses I put on her bed. This is a very serious thing, Maggie. Do you know how many fake princesses there are out there? No. It's a real problem. Whatever you say, Your Highness. Oh, here she comes. Let me guess, you didn't sleep a wink? Oh, how many does it take? A million? A million mattresses? I'll be dragging around mattresses until I'm an old lady. Hey, Maggie. Prince James. Prince James was Hank's twin brother. He was born four minutes after Hank, and being the younger twin, he would never be king, but he didn't mind. He was totally cool with just being a regular guy. Well, he was still a prince, but he was very laid back. Pretty much the opposite of Hank. Maggie and James had known each other for quite some time and liked each other a lot. They liked to do not so royal things together, like fill up the palace pool with slime, eat ice cream sundaes till their tummies hurt, and sneak into the kitchen to mess with the royal chef's menu. Goose liver pate? No thanks. Let's just change it to pizza. Extra cheese. Ooh, add pineapple. Yep, they were partners in crime. Oh, uh, what you up to? The princess pea chest. The what? Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pea under her mattress. Oh, yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pea under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pea. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pea out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ooh, scandalous. Let's do it. You almost got it. Just a little more. Okay, I see it. Get it, get it! Wow, I can't believe you lugged all those mattresses up there. I'm pretty strong. So, what now? We wait and see how the princess sleeps. It seemed like forever until the princess's bedtime. I win! No way, I always win. Mother always lets me win. You're playing the game wrong. Well, my mother always lets me win, so you're playing it wrong. Wanna play again? No, I'm gonna go to bed. Gee, I really hope I can sleep tonight. That bed is so lumpy. Anyway, good night, everybody. Good night, my love. Here comes the moment of truth. The next morning, Prince James and Maggie waited for the princess, eagerly awaiting her report. Here she comes. But instead of appearing well rested, the princess looked like she hadn't slept at all. The pee was gone, but the princess said, OMG, I literally tossed and turned all night long. Really? Yeah, it's like there's this lump right in the middle of the bed. I'm very sensitive to these things, you know, being a princess and all. Maggie and James were totally confused. I don't get it. We removed the pee, but she says she still felt the lump. She must be making it up, but why would she randomly lie about something like that? I got it. She knows about the princess and the pee test. So she's faking it to seem like a real princess. Yeah, at least I think so. So if she's not a princess, who is she? I don't know, but we have to find out. How can we do that? We spy. Ugh. James and Maggie both loved a good caper. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry? Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first rule of spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. <laughs> right, got it. Let's go. wait for her to reveal her true self. But the princess wasn't up to anything unusual. She did her nails, she read a magazine, she brushed her hair, 
she washed her face. You know, totally normal stuff. Wait, what? Uh -huh. ah, she's coming this way. So she's a witch. Major plot twist. But why the princess act? We have to get to the bottom of this. Maggie and James didn't have flying broomsticks, so they couldn't follow the princess, uh, witch, wherever she was going. So they just had to wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. The witch finally came back just before dawn. James and Maggie watched as she emptied out a small bag. What's all that stuff? Wait, shh, listen. Okay, the recipe calls for the eye of a rattlesnake. The whiskers of a catfish, three mouse tails, one ounce of kangaroo sweat. Ew. She's casting a spell. And a lock of stallion hair. Now just stir and voila, the magic potion is ready to serve. So that's why Hank likes her so much. She's been feeding him love potions. Not on my watch. Let's go stop her. James and Maggie ran to breakfast to thwart whatever wicked plan the witch had cooked up. Okay, so what's our plan? Okay, when she gets down here... Good morning, princess, my love. Ah, she's here! What do we do? Wash her face! Hey, what the heck are you doing? James, stop washing my girlfriend. She's a witch! She's got green under there, and she has a pointy hat, and she flies around on a broomstick, and she cooked up a love potion to make you love her. She's not a real princess at all. She totally pretended to feel the pee under her mattress, but it was all a ruse. She's a witch, I tell ya. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Apologize to the princess at once. Didn't you hear what I just said? Your girlfriend's a witch! It's no use, guys. He can't hear anything bad about me. He's in love. Can't you see? The spell is too powerful! That's right. And now you'll love me, too! <coughs> oh, no! The potion! Now we're going to... We're going to... To... I forget what I was gonna say. Oh, really? Oh, hi, princess. You look so... So beautiful this morning. Ah, oh, why thank you, James. James, James, you're under her spell, can't you see? You're a pretty princess. Ah, what do I do now? This is terrible. Both princes are under the spell of the witch. Wait, why am I not under the spell? I breathed in the love potion too. Relax, it only works on princes. It's a very specific spell. Oh, but why? What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to marry Prince Hank, but now I guess I have my choice, don't I? Maybe I'll marry Prince James. No! No? Ah, uh, does someone have a crush? Prince James and... What's your name again? Maggie. Maggie, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Shush! First comes love, then comes marriage. Oh, wait, not if I marry him. I can't hear you, la 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 la. Okay, I have to figure out how to defeat the witch and break the spell. All right, how do you destroy witches? Water, yeah, I'll just dump a bucket of water on her like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That won't work, and if you mess up my makeup, I will conjure up a curse, so bad. Okay, fine, Ugh, think Maggie. Oh, Dorothy also crushed a witch with her house. That's your plan? You're gonna smush me with a house? Yeah, I guess not. Ooh, Hansel and Gretel pushed their witch into an oven. No thanks. Face it, Maggie. Maggie. Whatever. Face it, Maggie. I'm going to marry the prince, and you can't stop me. Why do you even want to marry the prince anyway? Aren't we just supposed to marry, like, wizards or ogres or something? Seriously? What? You don't think witches grow up reading fairy tales, too? They do? Yes! And all my life, deep down, I've known that I'm really supposed to be a princess. So when I heard there was a real prince looking for a princess, well, I put on my dress and I hightailed it over here. Okay, well, I guess that makes sense to me. I mean, I'd like to be a princess too. <laughs> Who wouldn't? But don't you think it's a little messed up that you used the love potion on Hank? I wanted him to like me. Honestly, I think you guys have a lot in common. I think he'd like you anyways. Really? You think so? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I think James likes you too, by the way. Really? I mean, yeah, I guess he's pretty cool. 
I was only kidding when I said that I might marry him. It doesn't matter. I'm not a princess. I don't know if you noticed, but I wear the same dress literally every single day. Well, except today. These are my spy clothes. Wait, I just got a great idea. Let's do a princess makeover! Fun! Their princess makeover party was so much fun. The girls barely noticed that they were totally bonding. Could they really become friends? They sure looked like besties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you do know this doesn't technically make me a princess, right? Who cares? If you feel like a princess, you're a princess. End of story. Now let's go get Hank and James and go have some fun. <laughs> princess, my love. No, she's my love. Um, I think you have to break the spell first. All oh, right. Do you have any lizard's tails or grasshopper belly buttons? Uh, not on me. Hm, I'll just try a chant. All right, let's see. This should work. Loveth spell brachioso. What happened? I feel weird. Hey, Maggie, cool dress. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> Hey, I got an idea. Let's go play mini golf and get some ice cream. Great idea. So the four went out on a double date and had a blast. The princess witch was nervous to reveal her true identity to Prince Hank, but he thought it was pretty cool. Ice creamiosa magicus flyeth into my mouth. <laughs> This is seriously so much cooler than being royalty. It took a little convincing for the queen to come around, but she realized that having a royal family member with magical powers could come quite in handy. But most importantly, she saw how happy the princess witch and Hank were. The queen did have one question though. So did you really feel the pee under all those mattresses? No, I read about that in a fairy tale once, so I thought it was worth a shot. The queen also approved the match between James and Maggie. They were obviously perfect for each other. Yay! So the story ends with the happiest of fairy tale endings. Not just one true love, but two. And a couple of girls who grew up loving fairy tales became real princesses. Pretty cool. Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. Today's story is Rumpelstiltskin. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go. Long, long ago, there was a dad, and he had a kid. A daughter, actually. <gasps> That's me! <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Ah, oh, gee, thank you, king. Thanks, a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning, I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me! Why, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay, I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. The elf man worked his magic. He sang while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone. And in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good! I want more! So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return! Oh, 
and the ship will be full of singing mice who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do, so I, I called out. Uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do you? I do. I do. I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hand, making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song. But my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. And he <laughs> laughed all crazy-like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold, and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time, when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am. Give me that baby. Okay, funny story. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? I began to guess. Paul, no, Mike, no, Mark, no, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S-E-A-N. Nope. Sean spelled S-H-A-U-N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. Nope. Oh, nope. I guessed hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. But seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. You think you were just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs> the brunch buffet was pretty good too. Smoked salmon with perfection. Mwah! The end. Hi kids! Who's ready to watch all of Rapunzel's adventures? I know I am. But first, let's check in with Rapunzel herself for a super fun countdown. Hi guys, Rapunzel here. It can be tough living in a tower all by your lonesome, but sometimes it's not so bad. So let's talk about the awesome and not so awesome stuff, aka the pros and cons of living in a tower all by yourself. It's awesome that you get all the cookies to yourself. <laughs> well, there must be like a hundred cookies in here. <laughs> hmm. The not so awesome thing is, there's no one here to stop telling you to eat a hundred cookies by yourself. Mm, I have a tummy ache. A not so awesome thing about living all by yourself alone in a tower is that you never have anyone to play games with. But the 
awesome thing about playing by yourself is you always win. <laughs> Congratulations, me. Good job, me. Oh, thanks, me. <laughs> you're so great, me. Oh, no, you're so great. <laughs> one super awesome thing about living alone in a tower all by yourself is there's no one there to tell you to clean your room. But the not so awesome part is there's no one to help you when you get stuck in a pile of your own stuff. Help! When you live all alone in a tower, there's no one there to tell you it's your bedtime. <laughs> awesome. But then again, there's no one there to tuck you in. We're singing you a nice lullaby. We're doing under the bed monster check. <laughs> when you live alone, you can truly dance like no one's watching. So awesome thing about that is when you finally pull off the sickest, most awesome dance move of all time. There's no one there to go. Woohoo! Go Rapunzel! Go Rapunzel! It's your birthday! It's your birthday! And speaking of birthdays, can you imagine having to celebrate your birthday all by your lonesome? Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to me! Saddest party ever. Actually, there's a ton of stuff that's hard to do by yourself, like brushing out tangles in the back of your hair, or scratching a hard to reach itch, or playing hide and seek. Ready or not, here I come. So there you have it, the pros and cons of living alone in a tower. It can be pretty fun hanging out solo and having some me time, but at the end of the day, it's also nice to have someone around to keep you company, you know, besides a wicked witch, like Dan Gossel. That's for sure. Now, it's time to watch all of Rapunzel's adventures together. Are you ready? Let's go! Once upon a time, there was a man and woman who were very much in love. Let's just call them Tom and Sally. Sally was gonna have a little baby. They were so happy, but also nervous because they didn't have very much money. How are we going to afford all that baby stuff? Diapers and bottles and pacifiers and baby books and baby toys and baby blankets and baby bouncers. Calm down, you worry too much. Everything's gonna be fine. No, not fine. Look, we don't have enough room for a baby. And don't even get me started on Dame Gothel. Did I forget to mention that they lived in a teeny tiny hovel rented from Dame Gothel? Yes, that Dame Gothel, the witch. No one knew for sure if she was a witch, but she wore very witchy looking clothes and had a very witchy laugh. <laughs> so yeah, Tom was right. Her backyard wasn't exactly the best place to raise a baby. One night, Sally awoke with the most peculiar craving. I'm hungry. I could go for some Rapunzel flour. What? You know, those little weeds that taste like spinach? I want some. Where am I supposed to get Rapunzel at three in the morning? Dame Gothel has a growing in her garden. She'll put a curse on me if I steal her Rapunzel. Oh shush, she'll understand. And so that's how Tom found himself creeping around in the witch's garden at three in the morning filling up a basket with Rapunzel flowers. He had just pulled up the last weed when... Him, just what do you think you're doing? Uh, borrowing? No, you're stealing! I didn't mean to, I promise. My wife was just hungry. She's having a baby. A baby? Yes. Do you like babies? I love babies. I'll make a deal with you. I won't send you to prison if you let me take care of your baby. Like babysit? Uh, okay. Sure, like babysitting. <laughs> Dame Gothel cackled her witchy laugh, but Tom didn't get what was so darn funny. Uh, okay. Thanks. No, thank you. Okay, see you around. When their baby girl was born two days later, Tom had completely forgotten about his deal with Dame Gothel, but she did not. I'm here to take my baby. What? Me and him made a deal. I think I'll call her Rapunzel. And with a poof of smoke, the witch disappeared, taking the baby with her. Uh, Our baby! Oh no! Stop her! 
Tom and Sally were beyond freaked out. They called the police and formed a search party, but no one could find Dame Gothel and baby Rapunzel. It was like they had disappeared into thin air. But of course they hadn't just disappeared. You know this part of the story. They were in a tower deep in the woods. Here's what you might not know about this fairy tale. Dame Gothel wasn't entirely witchy. She actually tried very hard to be a nice mommy to the new baby. She gave her the best baby toys. She sang her the sweetest lullabies. rock a baby on the treetop. Well, she tried. Dean Gothel even tried to make silly faces to get Rapunzel to laugh. But baby Rapunzel must have known that this wasn't her real mommy, so she pretty much never stopped crying. The only thing that could calm her down was when Dean Gothel brushed baby Rapunzel's hair. Oh, thank goodness, finally. Dean Gothel spent so much time doing Rapunzel's hair that she got really good at it and eventually tried out pretty much every hairstyle there is. And Dame Gothel didn't dare cut Rapunzel's beautiful hair. So over the years, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. By the time Rapunzel was a young lady, it was like world record length. Hey, Dame Gothel, you think I could enter a hair competition or something? I bet I could win a big prize. You know very well that you can't leave the tower. Right, there was that about Dame Gothel. She wouldn't let Rapunzel leave the tower, not even on a super nice sunny day. Maybe one day. I heard that you're not going anywhere. Yeah, but one day I'll get out, she'll see. Heard that too. Let's talk about what it's like growing up in a tower away from all civilization. It can get pretty lonely and very, very boring. Here are the things Rapunzel did to keep herself entertained all those years. I learned to knit. I read every single book in the tower library at least three times. I learned to cook international cuisine. Come on and get it, spaghetti taco sushi. I taught myself different languages. Hola. Aloha. Konnichiwa. Buongiorno. Alo. I learned to dance. Ballet, tap, salsa, and hip hop. I gave myself piano lessons. I counted all my hairs. 1,341, 1,342, 1,343, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3. I wrote jokes. What's in one wall? Say to the other wall. I'll meet you at the corner. <laughs> I studied the effects of boredom on mice. Day 453, Sir Squeakly ignores his cheese. I made jewelry. I learned to meditate. Then one day there was a knock at the door. Happy. Dame Gothel never knocks. Yo, hello. I'm selling craft boxes. Do you want to buy one? Craft boxes? Yeah, they'll keep you entertained for hours. That sounds awesome. Come on up. Well, hi there. I'm Crafty Carolina. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Crafting Carolina. I'm Rapunzel. Oh, that's nice. Do you live up here all by yourself? Well, my mother, Dame Gothel, lives here too sometimes. But now that I'm old enough, I stay here alone a lot. Oh, you really shouldn't give so much information to strangers, dear. Oh, well, I never met a stranger before. <laughs> well, that's odd. Anyway, may I show you my crafting wares? Check that out. It's crafting bags. Cool! I'll take two. One for me and one for Dame Gothel. Oh, well, score. All right, I'll sign you up for two. Uh, you got money? Money? Yeah, you know, that you buy stuff with. Uh, no, I, I don't, but I'll trade you. How about this giant sweater? Kind of warm out. Oh, well. How about this DIY jewelry? It's nice, but... Not really your style? Not really. Okay, well, why don't you just hang out till Dame Gothel gets here and she'll pay you. Okay! So Rapunzel and Carolina spent the rest of the day making crafts. Those crafts 
lifting arms. Finally, Dame Gothel arrived, but she was very jealous and didn't want to share Rapunzel with anyone. So she was not exactly happy to find Crafty Carolina there. Get out of this tower! But she's nice, and she's selling these super cool craft boxes. This is what I think of craft boxes. Hey, that's not nice. You're next. Ooh, all right, gotta go. You are so mean. She could have been my very first friend ever. You don't need friends. You have me. Yeah, you're like a great friend. That's it. You're grounded. Grounded? But I'm not allowed to leave anyway. Well, now I'm boarding up the door so no one can ever come here again. But how are you going to get in? Oh, right. I know. I'll call Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And you'll throw your hair out the window and I'll climb up it. Really? It's a good plan. And so Dame Gothel closed up the tower so that no one could ever visit Rapunzel ever again. Rapunzel was sad. She had always been alone, so she never knew what it might be like to have a friend. Now that Rapunzel knew, she felt extra lonely. It was taking some serious getting used to pulling Dame Gothel up the tower with her hair. Ow! Ow! Oh, take it easy! Rapunzel took to singing lonely songs, belting them from the tower window. Lonely, I am so lonely. I ain't got nobody to be up in the tower with me. All by my lonesome. All these years I'm alone. All these years I'm alone. <laughs> la la, la la, la la. So lonely. It was quite the show. One day Rapunzel was doing her usual, singing sad ballads from the tower window, when two brothers, princes, heard her voice in the forest. Halt, what's that? The sick animal crying for help? No, it's an angel. Uh, okay. I must find her. You're on your own, dude. I'm going back to the palace. Peace. The first prince set off to find the source of the singing, but the forest was echoey and at every turn it sounded like the singing was coming from a different location. It was like he was going in circles. But then, just before nightfall, he found her. <gasps> She's beautiful. The prince, who was named Prince Edward, by the way, returned every day for a whole month. He would just sit and listen, silently applauding at the end of each song so as to not be noticed. At home, his brother Brad teased him. How's your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. You totally like her. Edward has a crush. No, I don't. <sighs> Whatever, dude. Well, maybe I do. And one day I'll talk to her and we'll fall in love and then I'll ask her to marry me and be my queen. This got Brad's attention. You see, Prince Edward was next in line to be crowned king. But there was one catch. He had to be married. Prince Brad had always assumed this would never happen and that he would become king. He already had a girlfriend. Princess agreed, so marriage would be no problem. Edward's way too shy. He'll never even talk to the tower girl. I'll marry Ogret before dad retires and then I'll be king. The next day, Prince Edward set up his usual spot and listened to the sweet sounds of Rapunzel singing. Are you there? <sighs> Are you anywhere? Then suddenly, the singing stopped. What? No. Keep singing forever. I wonder who that could be. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel, is that the name of the lovely songstress? I love it. Then the prince watched in awe as Rapunzel dropped her golden braid down the side of the tower. That little old lady is climbing her hair like a rope. How strange. The prince waited and watched the tower window until again the braid dropped down and Dame Gothel climbed to the ground and hobbled away. Prince Edward waited to be super extra sure Dame Gothel was gone. Then he approached the tower. He cleared his throat and called up in his best witch voice. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Huh? Again? I wonder what she wants now. Ow! Sorry, I must be heavier than a little old woman. Who are you? I'm Prince Edward. A pleasure to meet you, my lady. A prince? Really? That's so cool. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, I'm afraid not. I'm not allowed to have any visitors. Oh, really? That's a bummer. May I use your hair to climb back down? No, it'll hurt you. Never mind. I'll just jump. No, don't jump. You'll hurt yourself. You can use my hair. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to go. I waited an awfully long time to talk to you. 
You have? <laughs> yes, every day I sat down and listened to you sing, dreaming of the day I would finally meet you. Really? I mean, I guess I am a pretty good singer, so... The best! I wish you could stay too, but I'll get in so much trouble if Dame Goffle finds you here. How about this? I'll climb that tree and we could talk from there. That way, we're really not breaking the rule, are we? Brilliant! So Prince Edward climbed down Rapunzel's hair and then back up the nearest tree. So your name's Rapunzel, huh? Nice to meet you. And it's nice to meet you, Prince Edward. Prince Edward returned every day to the same spot to talk to Rapunzel. They talked about everything under the sun, like, what's it like being a prince? It's pretty cool, I guess. Sometimes the crown makes my head a little itchy. What's it like being locked away in a tower? It's okay, I guess. Sometimes I wish I had a pet. A nice cat or a dog. I've read lots of books about dogs, and they seem super nice. They are. Row, and sang row, songs row together. Row boat, gently down the stream. Uh, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. They even played catch. <laughs> Sorry. I'm okay. Finally, one day the prince realized something major. He was definitely, most assuredly, in love with Rapunzel. He couldn't hold it in a second. Rapunzel, will you marry me? Good thing for Eddie, Rapunzel felt the same way and said, yes. Awesome. But wait, I can't. I'm not even allowed to talk to you, much less marry you. The prince was stunned. Surely your mom wants you to be happy. Well. What? I don't think she's my real mom. Really? I think she took me from my real parents. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes I think I can remember my real mom. Well, then that settles it. We're busting you out of here. We'll find your real parents, and then we'll be married. Okay, but not now. Dame Gothel will be here any minute. I'll come back for you tomorrow. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And hurry, my feet hurt. Back at the palace, Prince Edward couldn't contain his excitement. I'm getting married, I'm getting married. But I'm Prince Brad heard married, Edward's song, I'm and that's not good, kids. Married, Remember, I'm Brad wanted to be king, and their dad was retiring his crown in just one month. If Edward marries that girl, then he gets to be king. I have to stop this. Prince Brad jumped on his horse and rushed to the tower. He arrived just in time to see Dame Gothel climbing down Rapunzel's hair. That must be your mother. I'll just have a little chat with her. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. What do you want? Pardon me, but I thought you might like to know that a rapscallion of the lowliest order is plotting to abscond with your fair daughter. A what is doing what now? A bad guy is going to take your daughter. What? Never. Wait, how do you know? Prince Brad told her everything, including the fact that Rapunzel had been meeting with Edward every day for months. Dame Gothel was livid. That means very, 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 very angry. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. What's wrong? You know what's wrong. You were planning to leave me after everything I'd done for you. Well, don't be mad. I just want to marry the prince. Is that so bad? If you want to go, then go. But first, I'm cutting your hair. What? No! Why? I love my hair. <laughs> but there was no arguing with Dame Gothel. She cut off Rapunzel's long locks and kicked her out into the cold, dark night. Rapunzel wandered the forest, hoping that somehow she would find Prince Edward. But she had never left the tower in her life. She didn't know where to go. Eventually, she found a hollow in a tree and curled up inside to sleep. I guess this is kind of like my tower. The next day, Prince Edward awoke, eager to see Rapunzel. He sang his song again. I'm getting married, I'm getting married. He sang and whistled all the way to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let that hair down. I'm coming up. The braid dropped and he climbed up. We're getting married, we're getting married. Ah! You were coming to take my Rapunzel, weren't you? Where is she? She's gone. You're my prisoner now. And just to be sure you don't get out, I'm tying you up! <laughs> Dame Gothel left the prince tied and locked up in the tower. Earlier it had been the happiest day of his life. Now it was the saddest. Back in the forest, Rapunzel was desperately trying to find her way back to the tower. Edward will be getting to the tower any minute now. If I can just find my way back, we can run away together. But it was no use. Rapunzel's sense of direction was limited to going in circles in the tower. Edward! Edward! 
didn't know where she was going or what she was doing, but she was not going to give up. Edward! Meanwhile, in the tower, Prince Edward was calling out for her too. Rapunzel! Edward! Rapunzel! Edward! You get the idea. Poor Rapunzel had been wandering the forest for days. She had learned to survive by watching animals. First, the squirrels. Hmm, okay. They eat the little nut thingies that fall off the tree. Okay. <laughs> Ugh, nope. Then she looked to the birds. Hey, haven't you heard of sharing? <laughs> Finally, she saw a deer munching on an apple. Hmm, I can do that. Mmm, delicious. The apples gave her new energy and she set off again determined to find Prince Edward. She walked and walked and walked and walked. And then, rather suddenly, she found herself in a whole new world. People! Hey, people! <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Cheese Emporium. Wow, so much cheese. Mm. <laughs> Tommy's Toys and Trinkets, awesome. <gasps> Betty Baldy's Beauty Parlor. <gasps> hey, maybe she can fix my hair. Hi, are you Betty Baldy? Sure am. Hi, Um. so my mother, well, I don't know if she's really my mother, <laughs> long story. But anyway, this woman cut my hair off and I was hoping that you could do something with it. Well, sure, honey. Sit down, let me fix you up. The side pony. Pigtails, beehive, how's that? Love it! You got a big date or something? Well, <laughs> I'm supposed to marry this prince, but now I can't find him anywhere. It's like he disappeared. Oh, story of my life, honey. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Gotta go. <laughs> you gotta pay first. Oh, right. Money. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, so I don't have any of that, but I can work. So Rapunzel agreed to be the hair sweeper upper for the rest of the day. She was busy at work when she saw a familiar face coming in the door. Dame Gothel. And she's wearing my hair. It was true, kids. Dame Gothel seemed to have taken Rapunzel's blonde braid and fashioned it to a wig of her own. You got some hair. It's all natural, too. Yeah, right. You say something? Me? Nothing. Anyway, I need a very special hairdo. I'm going to a ball at the palace tonight. A ball at the palace? How fancy. It's an engagement party for the prince. Rapunzel's jaw dropped. Engagement party? The prince? My prince? What? And wait a second. Why is Dame Gothel going? Something's not right about this. Rapunzel decided that she had better follow Dame Gothel to the party. Uh, hey, I'm, um, I'm on the list. Yeah, okay, see ya. Now where's Edward? I have to find him. Edward's not here. Who are you? I'm Prince Brad, but when I get married tomorrow, I'm gonna be King Brad. The brother. And who are you? I'm, um, uh, what's that? Oh, okay, coming. I have to go. Talk to you later, okay? <laughs> Wait, I recognize you. You're that girl from the tower. Rapunzel tried to rush out of the palace, but she somehow got caught in a conga line. Edward is supposed to be king, not Brad. Something is seriously wrong here. I bet that old stinker Dame Gothel has something to do with this. Oh, I gotta get out of here and find Edward. <laughs> Finally, I thought we were gonna conga forever. Okay, how do I get out of here? Food! Oh my gosh, delicious! Then Rapunzel heard Dame Gothel's voice. Don't worry, Edward's locked away. He'll never get out! <laughs> but I saw the girl from the tower. What's her name? Cozumel? It's Rapunzel, and I'm telling you there's no way you saw her. She's lost deep in the woods. There she is now! Get her! Gotta go! Rapunzel tried to run away, but once more got trapped on the dance floor. This time, it was a limbo contest. Ah! Too low! I'll get you! Rapunzel finally found the door and ran away from the ball. Okay, so Dame Gothel has Edward locked away somewhere. 
Like, in jail? But he would never commit a crime. Wait, so obvious, Rapunzel. He's in the tower, but I don't know how to get to the tower. I looked and looked and looked before, but it was no use. What if I go back into the woods and get lost forever? Oh! Rapunzel didn't know what to do. She was just about to break down in tears when another familiar face appeared. Well, you look like someone who could use some cheering up. And you know what I do to cheer up? I cry up. Crafting Carolina, hi! <laughs> do I know you? I'm Rapunzel, the girl from the tower. Oh, you changed your hair. I like it. Oh, wait, that mean woman from the tower isn't here, is she? Dame Gothel? No, thank goodness. Wait a second, I thought you never left your tower. She kicked me out just because I fell in love. Well, that's not nice. Tell me about it. And now she's got my prince locked in a tower. And I don't know how to find my way back to rescue him. I'll never see him again. Well, wait a second. I know how to get to the tower. It's on my sales route, remember? Oh, yeah. Can you take me there? Well, sure. But we can't go now because it's dark out. And I don't mind telling you, I'm a little bit afraid of the dark. It's one thing, you know, when you're in town, but do not get me started on the woods after dark. It's so scary, the wind howling in the trees, weird noises like <coughs> Ow! <coughs> I'm sorry, did I scare you? Well, I just thought about the poor Prince Edward locked away in the dark tower. He's probably scared and lonely. <sighs> okay, let's go. What? We're gonna go rescue Edward! Really? Now? Well, we gotta get some supplies first, but yeah! We can be brave! Yeah! Let's go save that prince! Yay! After Crafty and Rapunzel stocked up on all the important stuff, crafting supplies and snacks, the two set off into the woods to find the tower. They were only a little bit scared. <laughs> be brave! Right, okay. <laughs> what? We got this. Be brave. Right. Brave. Very brave. Not scared. That's it. I'm going back. No. No. We got this far. There's nothing here in the dark that isn't here in the daytime, too. But what about animals that sleep during the day and come out at night like bats? Bats are scary. Oh, yeah. But you said we'd be brave, so let's be brave. Wait. What was that? What? Shh. Oh, yeah. I definitely hear something. Hide! Huh. Oh no, not her! She must have suspected I would come out to rescue Edward. What are we gonna do? Uh, be brave? She's probably going to the tower. Let's follow her, but we have to be quiet. Right! That was too loud. Sorry. Rapunzel and Carolina stepped forward following Dame Gothel, and then they realized they were already at the tower. They didn't recognize it before because it was covered in thorns. Ouch! Uh, who's there? Oh no, hide! Uh, I'm not jumping in there, it's prickly! Rapunzel, what are you doing here? Uh, Rapunzel, be brave. I'm here to save Edward, so let him go. Never! His brother is going to be crowned king, and then I'll get a seat at the royal council. You? Why? Because I'm the one who got rid of Edward. Duh. Now go away before I lock you up, too. Well, not on my watch, sister. Crafting Carolina tossed a giant net over Dame Gotham, trapping her. Awesome! Where'd you get that? I made it. Crafty. Hey, let me out! No way! Okay, we took care of Dame Gothel. Now we gotta save Edward. Uh, uh, how are we gonna get up there? Wait, I know! What's that? <laughs> Grappling hook! Oh. Never know when you're gonna have to scale a wall. <laughs> but we'll still get scratched up, won't we? Oh, well, I also brought scissors! Obviously. Can't crave without scissors. Here, take a pair. The two snipped away until the last of the thorny vines fell. Grappling time! All right, Rapunzel, scale that wall! But what about the window? It's all boarded up! Kick it! Uh, but I'll break it! That's the point! I've never broken anything on purpose before! Okay, here goes! 
Rapunzel? Edward! You changed your hair! Do you like it? <laughs> I love it. Oh, Edward. Rapunzel, my darling. My prince. Um, guys, super sweet reunion and all, but it's almost morning. We gotta go stop a wedding. Huh? Oh, right. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, what about me? Sorry, Gothel. Shouldn't have been so mean. Rapunzel, Prince Edward, and Carolina rush to the palace. Edward? My son! Dad! Hi! I missed you! Uh, sorry to interrupt a nice moment again, but we gotta stop this wedding! What? Stop the wedding! What did she say? Stop, stop the, the wedding. wedding! You're too late. I'm king now. No! Well, it stinks! Tell me about it. After everything we've been through, first I was locked away in the tower, like my whole life. Then Dame Gothel kicks me out and I wander around lost in the woods for days. And then poor Edward gets locked away in the tower, scared and all alone. Finally, we heroically rescue him. But then bad guy Brad gets to be king anyway. It's not fair. What's this? Edward locked in a tower? Yeah, isn't that awful? Brad, Edward's own brother, plotted with evil Dame Gothel to lock him up in a tower so that he couldn't marry me. She is lying. Oh, no, I am not. And of course, Dame Gothel went along with it because she's just jealous and she's just plain mean. She is lying, I tell ya. Guards, arrest her. <laughs> not so fast. I'm still wearing the crown here and I have some questions. Ah, fine. Now, young lady, did I hear correctly? Did you say you were supposed to marry my son? Yes, sir. That was the plan, your majesty. And you rescued him from a tower? Yes, he was tied up and left all alone. So I climbed up and busted him out. I helped. <laughs> True. And Bradley, you knew Edward was locked in a tower this whole time? Daddy, I'm telling you, they're making this all up. I would never hurt my own brother. It was all that lady, Dame Gothel. And where is this Dame Gothel? We captured her in a big net. I made it out of yarn. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> well, I've heard enough. Guards, go get this Gothel and take Brad to his room. He's grounded indefinitely. Oh, that means forever. <laughs> no, I'm the king. I'm the king. And as for you. Yes? Thank you for rescuing my son. <laughs> You're very welcome. Do we get to be married now? <laughs> yeah, can we, Dad? Can we? Well, we were all set up for a party. What do you say, everyone? How about a royal wedding? Yay! And are there no objections this time? Excuse me. So sorry to interrupt. Do you object to this union? No, sorry. Did you say Dame Gothel locked you in a tower? Yes, you know her? She's the worst, right? What's wrong? Rapunzel? Rapunzel? Yeah? Who are you? I think those might be your real parents. No way. Are you serious? Ma? Dad? Rapunzel? Rapunzel! She has my eyes! She has my hair! Well, it used to be blonde and super long, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> well! This is turning out to be a very happy ending. Yeah, now let's have a wedding. Yay! <laughs> Sorry, I always cry at weddings. I, I can't help it. And so the two lovebirds were finally married and Rapunzel's long lost parents were there to celebrate with them. It was the happiest of days, just like a fairy tale. Don't you think? Oh wow, kids. What a happy ending. I just knew everything would work out. What about you? <laughs> tell me in the comments below. And tell me what story you want us to read next. Hit subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Cool School. And I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>